My arrival to the world was a bit of a family folklore. It was announced with the most common statement made after the birth of a baby. It's a girl, or it's a boy. Although, in my case, my mother may have commented more on the weight of her firstborn, I was a big baby. A moment for my mother. My grandfather is said to have held me in one hand, saying, Mala, Mala, Mala. Mala, in Croatian, is a term of endearment for a female child, little girl. I was christened Mala, a name that didn't quite match my size. The birth announcements and gender reveal parties of today are based on the gender binary, this idea that there are only two genders, male and female. This binary shapes our language and underlies institutional systems of power that privilege cisgender people. Cisgender means that your gender identity, that sense of yourself as a male or a female, matches that the announcement at your birth. I, like most of us, fit into that gender binary. But not everyone does. Gender diverse people face social rejection, harassment, and discrimination. I'm a cisgender woman, and I use she, her pronouns. That may seem like an odd thing to say out loud, trivial or awkward, but it can be incredibly powerful for people who are gender diverse. I'm also a professor of psychology, and I work to create gender-inclusive spaces in my classroom. As an ally, it is also my responsibility to educate myself so that that burden doesn't fall onto gender-diverse people. So I'm going to be sharing a little bit about some basic um, words around gender and, and why pronouns are so important. So I have had the opportunity to speak with many transgender and non-binary people, and those conversations have shaped and reinforced what I love most about teaching, listening, really listening. And there's three most common things that they have talked about, and they would like us all to know. Ask for pronouns, create visibility, and don't over-apologize when we make a mistake. You know, new words are constantly coming into our language every day. Like, how many of us used the term social distancing prior to March 2020? The same thing is happening for language around gender. So think of gender identity as an umbrella term. Cisgender are people that fit within that binary. Transgender people have identities that don't match that sex that, were, that was announced at their birth. So, for example, someone who was born a male may identify as a female. And for non-binary people, gender is fluid rather than a fixed identity. So some people may feel both a man and a woman, somewhere in between, or completely outside of that binary. What we know about gender depends on the kinds of questions that we ask. And if we only allow people to check a box that says male or female, that's what we know. And we only understand gender within the binary. One study asked people to fill in terms that best reflected them. And when that happened, non-binary people chose 22 different terms. And some of them are under this umbrella, like gender queer and gender fluid. Now, although they're connected in very complex ways, gender identity is different than gender expression, which is how someone looks, and sexual orientation, who we're attracted to. So someone may identify as a cisgender woman, conventionally dress like or look like a woman, and be attracted to women. Researchers have found that 42% of Americans know someone who's transgender, and 26% of us know someone who uses a gender-neutral pronoun. But our comfort level with these is, no, it does not, is, is, is only about half. Half of Americans feel like they feel comfortable asking someone or using a gender-neutral pronoun. 
part of the reason that we're not comfortable is that we make an assumption about someone's gender based on their expression, what they look like, and thereby their pronouns. So instead, think of asking someone their pronouns just like you were to ask them their name. So there's three types of gender-neutral pronouns. Neo-pronouns don't fit, fit into the language um, that they're in. So Z and Zer is just one example. The singular they is um, the most common gender-neutral pronoun. Now, some people argue, well, you can't use they as a singular. It's not grammatically correct English. But it was in the 14th century. And we use you in both the singular and the plural. So when I refer to you, the audience, you understand that I mean all of you, not just you over at table eight. <laughs> and as the linguist John McCorder says, we, if our language didn't change, we would all be speaking in the language of Beowulf. And as one, of my, the student, one student I spoke to said, when someone asks you to use their pronoun, they're trying to tell you how they feel on the inside. Language also makes a difference in terms of, sorry, I think I missed multi-pronouns, didn't I? Multi-pronouns are someone who uses the, the singular they along with he or she. Confused? It's okay. You can simply ask. You might say, I noticed in your email signature that you use both they and he. Would you like me to use those interchangeably, or would you prefer that I use one over the other? As one person I spoke to who uses multi-pronouns said, they got tired of getting sheet all the time. So does any of this actually matter? It does. Language can create inclusion it can help us to break this binary. Over 40 years of research, research on masculine generics that are supposed to refer to everyone, don't. So for example, if I were to ask you to imagine mankind, you would envision more men than if I ask you to imagine humankind. And gender-neutral language decreases discrimination and increases acceptance of the LGBTQ and gender diverse people. So share your pronouns and invite others to share theirs. But make sure that you don't ask, that you make sure that it's optional for people because some people are not ready or not comfortable to share those publicly. One student I spoke to felt really targeted in a class when the professor went around the room and asked everyone for their names and their pronouns. After stating theirs, the professor just stopped asking everyone else after them. They said, it was really clear the instructor was singling me out. So when asking for a pronoun, make sure that you ask everyone, not just someone you think looks like they use a gender-neutral one. The Trevor Project is an American nonprofit whose mission is suicide prevention among LGBTQ youth. And in one of the most heartbreaking and striking results from their most recent survey, non-binary students who said they had no one who respected their pronouns had over two and a half times the rate of attempted suicide than those who had most or all of the people in their lives use their pronouns. Let that sink in we can impact a person's life by using their pronouns. A therapist who works with LGBTQ youth told me, their pronouns feel like the only power they have. And one person shared with me, yeah, I know, it's really hard to learn a new pronoun, but do you know how hard it was to ask? And it's not like we don't know how to do this. When someone gets married, and if they change their last name, we learn that pretty quickly, because it's a custom and expected. So we can do that. Sharing your pronouns creates visibility. So share them in places that you can, email signatures, social media sites, video conferencing platforms, or badges at work. 
One person that I spoke to decided to leave an organization because they, were, they felt like they were the token trans person. And in the exit interview, the supervisor said, why are you leaving us? And they replied that despite the best effort of the organization to be inclusive and to create visibility, they were the only out trans person and it was taking an emotional toll. The supervisor said, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. This could have been such a good learning opportunity for us. Their response, that's why I'm leaving. They may have stayed had they feel, felt more included. Universities and other institutions are trying to create visibility by changing language on their websites and in printed materials to be more gender neutral. And in one study in a workplace, LGBTQ and gender diverse employees rated their workplace as more fair and positive when gender pronouns were made visible. Visibility was really important for junior and high school students that I spoke to. One student was so happy when the school hung their pride flag in, their, in the hallway. The, the visibility of cultural icons, celebrity icons, announcing their gender identity, like Elliot Page, Sam Smith, Demi Lovato, these were really important for the students. And students want to read work by and about gender diverse authors and scholars. And for BIPOC students, black indigenous people of color, this is even more vital because their stories are more or less visible than whites. This is an image, a compilation of images sent to me by an elementary grade school teacher who embodies inclusivity in their classroom. He uses gender neutral language. He is very conscious about books and class displays. They visibly show up in different gender expressions to show that gender doesn't need to look any particular way. When students see themselves in course curriculum and they see themselves represented in their space, their physical space, guess what? They do better academically. And isn't that what we all want? Visibility is powerful. And lastly, don't over-apologize if you make an error, if you mistake someone's gender, or if you say the wrong pronoun. We all make mistakes, and I can't tell you how many times I make them, and will continue to make them. But when we do, say you're sorry, correct yourself, and move on. One person said that over-apologizing puts a spotlight on the trans person and we're made to feel like we have to accept an apology for something we didn't do. So let's not add to the emotional toll by making our mistakes someone else's. One student told me, I can tell my professor just thinks I'm a girl who uses they, them pronouns. They don't actually see me as a non-binary person. They're just changing their language. For me, this is a call to be seen, deeply seen. I was born into a binary that gave me a language of male and female, and that's how I saw people. Learning a new language allows me to see people in all their complexity and humanness. I'm a better educator, a person, because of it. I have been teaching for nearly 30 years and here's what I know. It is psychologically exhausting to show up in a space and to not know if you will belong or be seen that you, for everything that you are. Imagine taking all of that energy and putting it in towards what you're studying and learning and thinking. That's the kind of classroom I want. And when that happens, it is unmistakable. So I'm gonna leave you with last one last term, gender euphoria. The joy and the happiness that transgender and non-binary people feel when they feel seen. And look at these things we can do in our homes, schools, in our workplaces and community. 
To paraphrase the poet and scholar, Dr. Maya Angelou, do your best until you know better. And when you know better, do better. I hope we do. Thank you.